Hey guys, Gordon's here. It's been a while. I'm still having trouble finding the camera. Okay, there it is, right there. It's been a while since I've done a YouTube video um, relating to cars, so I thought I'd get back on that. Uh, it's just been so busy that I hadn't wanted to take the time to play around on YouTube. Uh, but today we're messing with a Suzuki. Um, Grand Viterra. You like my girly reading glasses? I found those out on the road, out running, still in the pouch. And they're they my prescription, I guess, because they work good. I don't care what they look like. Um, but yeah, we're working on a a Suzuki Grand Viterra all-wheel drive job. It's got the little V6 in it. We're putting spark plugs in. I've already done this side. I'll show you how to do the other side. And we're gonna put brakes on it. And it needs a an axle on the driver's or the passenger front. See all the grease? What happens is these CV axles, they bust, or the boot bust. See, and grease, see how that, that grease just goes everywhere. And I usually just go ahead and replace the whole axle. Um, it's faster, so the labor's cheaper to do it than, than to replace the joint. And usually, after so long of slinging that grease and being out of grease, that joint goes bad anyhow. So that's what we're doing. So there's a coil pack, there's a coil pack, and then there's one back there you can't see really good. So those have to come out in order to get to the spark plugs. It looks kind of intimidating, but it's really not that bad. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. The first thing you wanna do is you gotta get to this, uh, this plug right here and get it unplugged. So you gotta just press it and push it. You don't want to be too rough on it because you don't want to break it. But see how that, that will come unplugged. That's your ignition coil for that cylinder. So then you're going to take a 10 millimeter socket and take this bolt, hold down bolt off for this ignition coil. And then this thing should pull right out of there. See, that's your ignition coil. You get your power through here, and it mics it, sends the spark down through the spark plug. So th this is like your, your uh, spark plug wire and ignition coil all made into one. So now we just got to take our spark plug socket and go down in that hole there because the spark plug is down in the middle of the cylinder there. So we'll bust it loose. I could get a longer extension. It help, might help me. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to get one to add to it. In there, give me, give me a little more room to turn my ratchet. And then you get the spark plug loose, and I usually take a, I'll take an old spark plug boot like that, just to stick down in there, snap onto the old plug, and pull it out of there. And you see these these plugs? They actually they're the factory plugs in this engine that's got 140 thousand miles on it. That's a, a platinum plug, I think. It might be no, it's iridium. So those plugs actually last a long time. But 
And here's the new one. You can see old versus new. So the gap is a little wider on the old ones because the plug is wore down. It should, it should run noticeably better. And she was having a little idle problem, I think, as well as she kept getting an EGR code. But I've had the vehicle for nearly a week and driving it and testing it and the, the light went out and hasn't come back on for the EGR code. So I don't know what we're going to do there. Maybe possibly the spark plugs being so wore out was causing it to trigger that code. I don't think it would, but it's probably possible. So yeah, you want to tighten your, your new spark plug back down in there. And then you um, put your ignition coil back in. Just put it right back down in there. Put your hold down bolt on. Your 10 millimeter socket. Tighten that puppy down. Don't over tighten it. You can destroy that coil, crack it, but, you know, just good and tight. Okay, and then we just plug our power source back in to the ignition coil. It's just as simple as that. So now we go to the other two. I mean, you get the point. I'm not going to film that. So I'll get that done and then we'll move on to the, the brakes and the axle. Okay, so now we're moving on to the brakes on this Suzuki. Really quite simple. Here's your brake caliper. I've already loosened the bolt, so take these two bolts out. Caliper slips off of there. And yeah, they're definitely worked out. You can see how thin those are. Cracked and just down to nothing. She didn't wear all the way through and hit metal yet, metal to metal yet, so that's good. Same thing on the front, just wore out. You can see the difference here. Here's the new pad. See how thick that pad is on that compared to this one? There's just nothing left on this one. I mean, she's going to have a noticeable difference in her brake pedal. It's going to be a lot thicker or a lot uh, better brake pedal. So that's good. I still can't find rubber gloves. Someone is still hoarding the rubber latex gloves. Whenever you change your pads, you want to lube the contact points where the pad actually slides in the caliper bracket and then put a little bit where the pistons will touch it and this is a, a special brake lubricant that doesn't break down under extreme temperatures but that is just help things to slide properly and keep the squeal and vibrations down. So we'll do that for each each pad and it's a synthetic grease so it doesn't take a lot. I'm actually probably putting too much on it but it won't hurt the pads it's just I'm wasting grease but there's it won't hurt the pads at all to have too much on it. Or you don't want to put it on the friction material. You just want to put it anywhere where it's going to slide. And you also have these 
these caliper pins here they slide so you want to always grease them put those back in those those have to slide properly if they don't slide properly they'll one side will wear out quicker than the other as simple as that okay at this point you want to take your caliper and compress the piston back up into the the caliper i usually you can use a c-clamp but i usually just take these big pliers i don't know if you can see that well or not but maybe you can see it a little better now i'll take these pliers and just squeeze that piston back up into the caliper up into its cylinder And you have to do that so the caliper will fit back around those new nice new thick pads and all this is doing you're you're just pushing brake fluid back up into the master cylinder that point you just slide your, your caliper back over put your bolts in we're not replacing the rotors this time they're, they're the uh, pads did not scrape metal to metal on the rotors so they're still in decent shape they didn't vibrate any that I could detect driving it so I think the rotors are actually in pretty decent shape so we're just going to leave those alone because that there's no point in it it's just an extra 30 or 40 dollars per side that the this individual would have to spend and it really wouldn't benefit from it at all in my opinion i am o Yeah, you just get your caliper bolts tight, good and tight. Just give it a little bump. You don't want to over tighten these, but you don't want to under tighten them either. So I go with, I, I tighten them down good and tight. And then what you want to do is after I get one side done, I get in the vehicle and I press the brake pedal down about five times just to move the fluid back down into the caliper and push the piston back against the, the brake pads that take up that slack. Because remember, you got to compress the other side too. And if this side is still pushed up in its cylinder, then we're going to be sending a little too much fluid up to the master cylinder. And it'll push it, it'll push it out of the reservoir. So that's all there is to that. I'm not going to film the other side. So we'll get the brakes done and then we'll move on to the axle. Okay, I know I said I was going to get the brakes done before we did the axle, but I guess we'll do the axle while we have the brakes apart. It'll just make it easier to, to pull some of this down and slide the axle out. So, um, I think I showed you earlier that this axle boot here was busted. And I explained all that, that we would be better off to replace that whole axle than to just do that joint. 
Well, for this Suzuki, we ended up with the wrong darn axle. They gave me the driver's side instead of the passenger side. And I just don't know. It's been kind of difficult hunting this axle down, so they can't have it until the morning. So I had to walk away from this job until tomorrow morning and uh, they'll swap me out. It's possible I could have asked for the driver's side, but I'm pretty sure I said the passenger side. So, anyway, it don't really matter. It is what it is. All right, it's the next day on this car, the Suzuki, and I supposedly have the right axle now. So, we're going to continue on. First thing we'll do is take this axle nut off. find the right soy socket it's that one I'm sure it's a metric but that's an inch and a quarter and that's going to fit so that's what we're going to use I'm going to take our air impact this thing's been acting kind of weak lately I'm not sure if it's my oh gun or my air pressure haha -ha, still got enough power to take that loose don't it mm -hmm. hmm somehow my caliper bolts got kicked I'm about to find them how in the world that happened? Mm -hmm. Well, that not good. I'll have to find them somehow. Well, I've had them laying there on a rag. I thought. I must have walked through here or somebody walked through here yesterday and probably kicked the rag. It's two bolts. Oh, I have to find them. Hmm. All right, so anyway, besides that, we got to uh, get these strut bolts loose I'll take a pencil and mark the outline of that just in case that's adjustable I'm not sure if they got a cam bolt in there or not but we'll have to set it back if it does exactly to that mark because that could affect the camber which is your alignment could affect the alignment. All right, what size do we need there? Is it a 19 millimeter? Yes. See if we can push that axle. Yes, it's not frozen the hub. That's good.
So basically what we have to do is pull this hub far enough away from this strut in order to get the axle out of the hub. <clears throat> punch on it. Sometimes it can be quite tight. There it goes. Now I'm, I'm actually pulling kind of tight there on that ABS wire and I don't like to do that. like to somehow hang that back up there. You reckon I can get a bungee or something to hold that? Maybe if I can find one or a string, anything. String or a, a bungee. There's nothing ever like that available when you just really need it. Here's one hanging right behind me. So what I can do is just Hook that to there. Of course, it's it's only got one hook on it. Maybe that'll be enough to hold it while I pop this axle out of here. Now, uh, that's annoying. All right. Anyway, we got to pop that axle out of the transmission, and we'll probably lose a little bit of. Transmission fluid. All right, I'm just gonna cut y'all off briefly while I roam, roam around aimlessly. Okay, so now I got us a string holding the weight of this spindle up so we don't stretch this analog brake system wire. And um, I got me a little pry bar here we can get maybe, and I got us a drain pan under there. So maybe we can get up in here and pop this axle loose now, maybe. Yep, there it comes. Yeah, she's out of there. It's just as easy as that. Okay, so I haven't looked at the new axle yet, but we're gonna see now and make sure it matches up. Um, it's a brand new axle from O'Reilly's Auto Parts, and I think I told you earlier, it was actually cheaper than I could get it from Amazon, so that's rare. Kudos to O'Reilly's for being cheaper than Amazon with their axle. I don't really mind that they got me the wrong one the first time. It might have been my fault. I might may have... Um, I, it's possible that I told them the wrong side. But they work with me. They're, they're that's a good, a good group, O'Reilly's. Okay, looks the same, same length, same splines, same shaft where that goes through the seal. Got a brand new axle nut. I mean, it's a brand new axle. Brand new bearings, brand new boots. Brand new nut they give you. So, I don't even have to take this one back to them. I don't know if they have a rebuild program or not, but 
they even have a CV axle instruction manual, which probably does a better job instructing you than I'm doing. Okay, so now we're gonna just slide this axle right back in exactly the same path that we took it out. Just slide it up there into the transmission, turn it and you'll be able to feel the splines grab. There it is, right in there. Takes a little bit of effort. Snap ring has to snap into place, but as long as you feel those splines grab and line up, then the rest of it is a go right in with just a minimal force. All right, so now our next goal is to get the front spline to line back up into the hub which I'm going to have to take my string back loose so I can get a little more play in there. Give me, give me the room to get that started back through the hub and through the bearing. So the spline, I just felt it go in. I'm probably in your, in your, the way of your viewing this, but doing the best I can here. All right, so if you've noticed, the, the axle is through the hub now. We can get our nut on there and that'll hold it from sliding back out. And the only thing now is we gotta get our strut bolts slid back into here. like that and nuts back on there and and those were not adjustable so our alignment is not affected at all so all we got to do is just um, tighten these nuts back down And then you take your, your socket, your axle nut socket, <coughs> tighten the axle nut back down. And then these axles, most axles have an axle nut that has a little relief right there that you, or a crimp that you hammer down against the axle that keeps the nut from ever backing off. Okay, so now I'm gonna have to spend a little time here and hunt my brake caliper bolts down. But one thing that I did notice, see like yesterday, remember I told you to lube your caliper pins? So that one comes out. This one up top is frozen. I noticed that the back pad here wasn't wore out like the front one. So I'll have to Somehow I'm gonna to have to twist that out of there. I don't remember what size it is. It is probably, oh, it is probably a 17 millimeter.
Mm, yeah, she's frozen in there pretty good. It's going to take a little effort to get her out of there. I may have to take the torch and heat heat this up in order to get that out because I don't want to break it. But I won't bore you with those details. Well, we got this caliper bolt out. Or I don't know why I always say we. I guess because I feel like y'all are right here with me. But this caliper bolt is out. So you can see how rusty they get because of moisture if you don't have proper rubber seals on them. But we'll just clean that up, wire it up, put some grease on it, and, and she'll be just like brand new. Okay, so we got the little Suzuki all back together. And uh, I guess we're going to go on a test drive now. Notice I'm still saying we. All right, so let's turn everything on. One thing I do every time that I do a brake job is I, I'll pump the brake pedal up. See that or not, I'll pump it up before I leave because that gets the fluid back down to the caliper. If you don't do that, you back out pumping your brakes you're not going to have any brake pedal and you might hit something so here we go new spark plugs new front brake job new passenger side cv axle and most importantly let's get this air condition rolling because it is hot I don't know if it's any hotter than summer ever gets, but it always seems that way, don't it? Every summer seemed hotter than the last. But it's not really. Right. And away we go. Brake check. Yes brakes backing up This train is bound for glory, this train. This train is bound for glory, this train. Garden's doing good. What is that beeping? Because I don't have my seatbelt on, probably. Nobody on it but the righteous and the holy. This train is bound for glory. This train. Oh man, thank the Lord for air condition. Yeah, brakes work nice, really nice. Let's see how this new axle sounds. I still need to put my seatbelt on. Sometimes it, it feels nice just to not even put it on, but I know it's more dangerous to put it on after I get rolling. doing right now all right seat belt on the new homes being built down at the end of our street
So far, so quiet. No vibrations. No chirps. There was some kind of chirp going on in the right front the last time I drove it. Ambulance ahead of us for some reason. I hope, he, I hope that's not for me. How could it be? One thing I got to look for on our test drive is the check engine light. It was coming on earlier, but it went off all by itself. It hasn't come back on yet, so. I'm hoping that was more of a matter of just needing spark plugs. I'll tell you what, it's real smart of whoever put these cones right in the middle of the street right as you're topping a hill, right as nobody can see you. Nobody directing traffic at all. Sometimes I wonder how we even survive. Okay, I think that we're good. I'm gonna test drive this thing probably about 30 miles or so and uh, I might go put some fuel in it I'm gonna go pick my father-in-law up and ride around with him he's got something he wants to show me so hopefully all is well with this vehicle Suzuki makes a good little good little truck little cars they don't give much problems it's garbage day on our street garbage pickup day I got mine to the road early this morning it's terrible when you miss garbage day not terrible for me I'll just burn it if I miss it I'll burn it and my sister-in-law's here that's a good reason to use the brakes maybe I should come back later no, just kidding.